morning everyone and welcome to our Wednesday reflection from St Anne's here in Egberth. Today I wanted to start with a question. How can we know what God is like? How can we know what is true about God? There's so much out there, so many opinions that people have. How can we know God? Do we have to do lots of research, lots of reading? When I was ordained, I got a few gifts and one of them was a set of writings by a famous English theologian. His name was John Owen and he lived in the 17th century. And here is some of his writing. It's taken me quite a while. In fact, the text, if I open up, it's it's rather small. Um, I'm only on page 32. I'm quite a slow reader. But would you believe that's not all he wrote? Um, He wrote another book and another book, and another book. In fact, that's not all about him either. He wrote, what, chap- volume five, six, seven, and eight. That's not all. Volume, what is it? Nine, 10, 11, and 12. And that's not all either. In fact, he wrote up to 16 volumes of his work, all at that tiny font. I guess in those days, there wasn't much TV to distract him, nor Facebook either. But here's the question, do I need to read all of these books to get to know God? It's taken me four years to get to page 32. I might as well give up. Is there a better way to get to know God? Well, thankfully, I think there is. You see, at the moment in the church's calendar, we have just celebrated Easter when Jesus died and rose again. And tomorrow, we remember Jesus ascending into heaven. And then in a week and a half, we'll be celebrating Pentecost. That's the day when Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to the church. And just before Jesus went away, he explained to his disciples, the apostles, that he was going to send the Holy Spirit. And this is some of what he said. I'm going to read from John chapter 16, verse 12 to um, verse 15. Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Now at first glance, Jesus' words sound a bit confusing. There's a lot going on in them. But what he is saying is actually quite simple. You see, Jesus can't tell his disciples everything, not just yet, it would be information overload. So after he's gone, he's going to send the Holy Spirit And the Holy Spirit is going to tell the disciples everything else Jesus wants them to know. So basically, these followers of Jesus heard some things directly from Jesus' lips and the rest via the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit would guide them and he would make known to them the rest. So where do we fit into this? How does this help us? Surely everyone out there with an opinion about God and Jesus could just be claiming to be speaking with the help of the Holy Spirit. How do we know which ones really are? Well, here's how to work it out. Who was Jesus speaking to when he said these words? You see, John chapter 16, if you know John's gospel, if you've read it before, well, it occurs during the Last Supper. It's the final meal Jesus has before his death. And during this final meal, he's giving final instructions to 12 of his followers. These followers would become known as the apostles. It was the apostles who traveled around the known world telling people about Jesus. It was the apostles who wrote the letters that became part of the New Testament. And it was the apostles and their helpers who wrote the four gospels. You see, the New Testament contains everything the apostles taught about God. Have you ever been to a church service when the creed is said or recited by the congregation? One of the lines in the Nicene Creed says this, We believe in one holy, 
Catholic and Apostolic Church. One holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. Now Catholic here just means worldwide or universal. It doesn't mean Roman Catholic. It just means all around the world. But there's that second description, apostolic. The creed says we believe in an apostolic church. Now the apostles all died a few decades after Jesus. So how can we say our church is apostolic anymore? Well, the Christian church is apostolic because it is based on the apostles teaching. Matthew, John, Paul, Peter and the others, the things they knew about God, they wrote down for us. Some of these things they'd heard directly from Jesus and other things the Holy Spirit told them. In fact, in John chapter 14, verses 26, just a couple of um, chapters before the verses I read, uh, it's still um, during the Last Supper before Jesus died, Jesus tells his disciples something else. He tells them that the Holy Spirit would not only teach them all things, but he would remind them of everything Jesus had told them. You see, God himself, in the person of the Holy Spirit, would be helping the apostles, reminding them and guiding them as the early church grew and as they wrote what would later become the New Testament. You see, that's why we can call the New Testament God's word, because God the Holy Spirit helped the apostles to write it. And that's why Jesus describes the Holy Spirit in verse 13 of today's passage as the spirit of truth. You see, what we have here in the Bible is God's truth. The Bible isn't truth about everything, but rather all truth about everything we need to know about God. All we need to know about what God is like. All we need to know about how to have a relationship with God. And all we need to know about how to please God in how we live our lives. And what about us? Well, we're not apostles, are we? So we don't have anything to add to God's word. But the Holy Spirit guides us as we read God's word. Have you ever read a verse of the Bible that has warmed your heart? It's felt like just the right thing at the right time. Well, that's God's Holy Spirit at work helping us to understand his word. Or have you ever been encouraged as you remembered a verse Maybe you'd read it weeks or months ago, but you've remembered it at just the right time. Well, that's the Holy Spirit again, helping us to remember God's word. You see, that's the wonderful thing about reading the Bible when you're a Christian. God himself is reading it with us, encouraging and reminding us as we go along. It's like he's sitting beside us. Isn't that wonderful? Well, let's pray and thank him for that. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for sending your Holy Spirit, for sending him first of all to help the apostles as they remembered what Jesus had said and as your Holy Spirit guided them in other things that they needed to know. Thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit helped them as they taught the early church as they wrote things down in the Gospels and in the letters, and they put the Bible together so that we can know you as well. And Father, thank you so much that your Spirit also guides us and helps us as we read your word. Thank you so much that he warms our hearts as we read things at just the right time, as we remember things that maybe we would have otherwise forgotten. Thank you so much that you are with us that you are near to us as we read your word, that you're not far off, but that you're guiding us, making it come alive to us and blessing us as we do that. So Father, we pray that that would continue, that you would continue to help us and to guide us, that you would open our minds, open our eyes and our ears to your word as it's preached, as it's read, as we read it as well. Please bless us and please would you bless us mightily in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, just to remind you, we'll be meeting again on Sunday uh, for our Sunday service that begins at half ten and it's available on Facebook and YouTube and on the telephone line too. It'll be great um, to be able to join you uh, at that. 
But it'll be even better, won't it, when hopefully in a few months we'll be able to meet again physically together at St Anne's. Um, as things are discussed and thought about, um, as government guidance and Church of England guidance is released, and as we work through all of that, we'll keep you posted on what things might look like and how that's going to work out. But won't it be amazing when we can see each other face to face again? I can't wait for that day. But in the meantime, may God bless you greatly. So stay safe and see you soon. God bless. Mm -hmm.